Hey guys, I'm Jasper. Thanks for checking out my channel. So today um, I'm building a black-tailed prairie dog habitat. Um, I wanted to start here with the North America pack because I think if I started with the moose or the, the cougar, I'd get super overwhelmed and maybe even cry. So um, this is a really basic build. I made a custom barrier for most of it and I built it kind of based on these pictures I saw. One was for a grizzly bear exhibit, which is pretty random. And then the other one was um, a fennec fox exhibit. I don't know what zoo either of them are at, but it was only slight inspiration. I don't know if you'd even be able to tell. So here I'm building the, the custom fence, or at least the basics of it. I tweak some things later on. Um, I knew I wanted it to be glass. I feel like that's pretty common for rodent exhibits, but I wanted to make a custom barrier here. I think they generally look better, but I don't mind all the in-game ones. The idea here was that I start with the f kind of front area being glass, and then I make a, a little side shed you'll see later, and then the backdrop is mostly rocks, the tiger rocks and the fake rocks. Um, but for now, I wanted to make a decent glass barrier that looked at least somewhat realistic. I feel like I've seen this kind of thing in a lot of zoos in my life. So here I was trying some things with the side piece, but I ended up scrapping most of this, I think. I didn't like how it looked. I'm not sure what I ended up using. I think I just used one of the stained glass pieces. Not stained glass. <laughs> um, the stained wood. like from the aquatic pack. I, I really like those pieces, mostly because they're flex color. I'm sure everyone said that. But I, I wanted to build a, essentially like a little room where the prairie dogs would sleep. And I wanted a big uh, glass window you could look into. I feel like that kind of thing is common, especially with rodents and smaller animals at zoos. They generally have rooms that you can actually peer into. I don't know if that's maybe just my local zoo, but I know that's usually the back exhibits are hidden for the bigger animals, but for the rodents, they don't really care, so. Um, so here I was trying to essentially lay the, the base down for this, um, this room that they would be sleeping in. I've been building a lot in The Sims, so you'll notice here when I'm making the roof that I pull the edges a bit over. I feel like that looks a lot better. I know that in Planet Zoo, they kind of do snap, or they, they do snap to the exact length of the, the shed or whatever it is, the building. Um, but I do like a bit of overhang. I feel like it looks more realistic. You don't generally have roofs that just like end. So that's something that I did. I also um, wanted this to essentially be the back of the exhibit that would lead to where the keepers would come in and stuff. I, I considered making it just straight out here and this is the only place the keepers would get in, like this would be the habitat gate, but I think with what I did that would have made the exhibit too small. And I don't I don't mind the look with the, the new mesh panels, or they're not new anymore actually, it's just one of my first times using them, so I'm talking about them like they're new. But yeah, so I used mostly the aquatic stained wood. I think that's one of the best building pieces, in my opinion. I'm sure that's pretty popular. And I also love the the dry stone at the bottom. I, I do wish it was flexicolor, but you know, isn't that with every piece in the game? So yeah, I'm building around the whole habitat here. Um, it's a pretty basic shape. It's honestly barely big enough for the amount of prairie dogs I put in, but it is just the right size. I think I had five females, one male. I could be wrong though, could have been six. So I do the pathing, and you'll see me do it probably like six separate times in the speed build. I couldn't get it to work, which I'm sure is a common sentiment. It's just, it doesn't work out. But um, yeah, here I actually build the barrier finally and then I start working on the back area again after I put down the base 
honestly, I didn't do much with backstaging. I really just put down the zookeeper hut, and I was like, that's good enough. I don't need anything else. It's not that I don't like doing it, because I, sometimes I do. It just depends on what I'm doing. If it's like a one-off like this, I don't really care to do it, because I know I, there's no cohesive theme to the zoo, so it doesn't really matter what I do. But I still want it to be presentable. So here you'll see that I moved the prairie dogs in finally. Um, so I obviously didn't finish the backstage area, but I move on to the rock work for now. And um, I, this takes me a while. I, I do mess with it a lot. I love the way the tiger rocks look, and especially with the fake rocks if they're a similar color, which I do change them to later when I start using more. But um, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm that happy with the backdrop for this one. It, it's a little too plain, I guess because of the like, location with the lake behind it, because I'm using a custom height map I was messing around with. I'm not like that proud of it, <laughs> but um, it's not the worst thing I've done. So the rock work here is mostly just like filler. I do, I do cover it up with you know, foliage and trees later, but I don't want them to escape. Honestly, with the prairie dogs, like, I know that um, the Zoopedia says that they mostly live in desert and grasslands, which is definitely true, because their range kind of ends at, like, Saskatchewan. I don't really know American states, sorry. <laughs> but. I still wanted to do Taiga. It's probably my favorite terrain in the game, even though it's not really the most practical for, you know, the animals we have. I, I decided to go with that theme anyway, because I'm probably going to do most of the North American animals in that theme, and I'd like them to be at least somewhat cohesive, like I can put these habitats together. But yeah, I, I really love the Rocky Mountains and all that, so, you know, I kind of had to go with that theme, even though the prairie dogs aren't that fond of it. I doubt they're like running away from trees or anything, so it's not a big deal. But I don't like most of the, the coverage restrictions anyway. I don't think most animals care what kind of plants are in their zoo. They just care if, you know, they got space to move. But anyways, um, enough about how I feel about prairie dogs in the game. <laughs> I think they're very cute. They have some of the cutest animations, so I'm happy with them. I'm very happy with this pack. Like I said, I, I love Alberta. I love, you know, Canadian animals. I know that Frontier was like, with the roadmap, oh, these are all American. But as a Canadian, I'm fond of them. <laughs> um, so here I'm doing a lot of the foliage, putting down trees, you know, more rocks, adjusting it. Like I said, I do it a lot. Um, I mostly use a limited number of trees and plants, especially plants. I think sometimes in past builds I would go overboard and just use everything because I think a lot of the um, the little bushes and flowers are really pretty and I like them, but you it definitely can overwhelm an exhibit, especially one like this where there isn't that much coverage because obviously the prairie dogs in the game don't really like it. So I tried to limit it to a few. I used you know the alpine flowers the purple ones. I forget what they're actually called. Um, I used Bramble, I think, even though I don't think it's technically Taiga. Taiga and Temper are close enough, right? <laughs> um, I used the Arrowwood a little bit, and I used something else. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm putting plaster down in the shed now. I think that helps to make it look, you know, a bit more intentional. Like it was actually built. Um, I do put bedding down and it kind of messes with that little stair thing I built so it's all just flat in the end but I like how it turned out and you know they actually use it when I'm not in creative mode which is super cute. I love the way they sleep and when they wake up you'll see some in the b-roll at the end. It's very cute if you haven't seen it already. Also I very rarely use this water thing. I like using the pipe, obviously, so that, you know, the keepers don't have to worry when you're actually doing a franchise or whatever, when they actually get thirsty. But I don't know. Uh, I do kind of dislike how the water pipe looks. Um, especially in an exhibit like this where it doesn't have anything to really cover it up because I was limiting the foliage. So I, I tried to 
put that in. I think it, it does look better, and they're very cute when they jump up to it. I don't think it really makes a difference in the animations, but I think it's cute. Um, so here I'm lining that side with plants, you know, trying to fill it up a bit more, make it look nice. Oh, I forgot I used this grass too, even though I also don't think it's taiga. It's one of the best plants in the game, in my opinion, so I'm not going to pass it up. I tried to just, you know, fill up some more space, make it look a little less empty in the middle. It It is pretty basic. I didn't want to, you know, cover it up too much. I wanted them to have space to dig, because that's kind of like their main appeal, those cute little animations. So, um, I made sure they had a lot of room for that, and they did generally stay in that open area when they dug their holes. So, I guess it worked out for me. <laughs> So, um, I added some enrichment here too, and then I also made sure that, you know, they can move around as much as they needed to. They obviously can't get onto some of the back area with the rocks or the side with the bramble, but that's not a big deal. So here I go back to the fence for a little bit, and I try to mess around with some education signs. Basically, I knew I was going to do a custom billboard after I finished the build, but I didn't know exactly what um, direction I was going to put it in, you know, that kind of thing. So I put a placeholder here. Eventually, I figure it out. But for now, I just leave the regular education board. I also mess with the curve of the pathing. I don't end up using this. I actually... I changed the pathing entirely, so you'll see that in a minute. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I was going for here, honestly. It doesn't match the rest. <laughs> but this wasn't a terrible idea. But I also didn't like how it looked. It's really hard to make the longer pieces, like the dry stone or any of the architectural walls, really work because it's hard to bend them to the path if you're not using one that's like aligned to the grid, which I do a lot. I, I do align them to the grid a lot, but I didn't for this one. It's a very weird shaped habitat, so maybe that was my bad. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's a one-off, so I did have it just end by the shed, so I didn't really have to do much. But you'll see here, I actually do what I, d I have in the final build, where I expand the path, because I realized that a four-wide probably isn't good to view these. And then I also have... I, m I move the um, same glass wall to the other side, and I make kind of like a little canopy. There is an object in the game from the New World theme that's actually very similar to this. I kind of forgot it existed, but, you know, this matches the theme a bit better, so it's okay that I made it custom. Um, I also end up tweaking this a bit later, because I realized that the boards I made at the top didn't really line up. Anyways, you'll see me struggling with the path for a long time here. Like, I <laughs> I think I, I went over it so many times. It is what it is. Honestly, I haven't used it yet, but there is a mod by uh, a creator named Kai that enables a free build, which includes for, for pathing. I really need that. Um, I'm waiting for the 1.7 update so that I can test it out, but I might be using that in my future builds if I like how it works, because man, I really struggled here. <laughs> You'll see, I, I go back so many times, it's gonna happen again. Um, but I, f I do finish the top part of the canopy, at least until I uh, fix you know, the alignment a bit later. This is generally how it ends up looking. I honestly like it. It does cast weird shadows, but I'm fond of them. I feel like it's kind of realistic. Especially when it comes to these like outdoor glass habitats. I find that a lot of the time they're kind of under some kind of, you know, dingy shelter. But I like them. I don't know. Um, so yeah, here I go, I go back to the pathing again. <laughs> I'm not even sure this is the last time. I can't promise it is. But... You'll see I keep, you know, giving up and moving on to other things and then realizing and then like, oh, yeah, I should probably finish the path and coming back. But, you know, it's hard. It kind of sucks. That's how pathing is. So I go to the foliage now a bit. I wanted to fill in this area because I realized that getting the path to hug the fence all the way around was just not going to happen. Now that I made it um, eight meters wide, it, it was just not happening. So I expanded it. And then I also used the dry stone pieces for a little bit to just, you know, finish up the area even though the path doesn't really go anywhere. Um, and then I'm pretty much finishing up here. 
at least on the habitat portion. And I do more of the uh, backstaging stuff here, or at least, you know, the keeper hut and then some of the back of the habitat just to make it look kind of finished. Um, so yeah, I just use some of the same trees I've been using. I add a couple more because I think up until now I was just using the Douglas fir. So I had the black spruce. Honestly, I just love pine trees. <laughs> but yeah, I just put down, you know, much of the same scenery or foliage. Make it look nice. As nice as it can be for somewhere that's really empty. Then I move on to, you know, finishing up the keeper hut. I think I basically redo the back portion. Man, I really jump all over the place. <laughs> um, yeah, so here I actually do it. And... Oh, no I don't. <laughs> I decided I want to put benches in bed. <laughs> this is how it is. Um, I try to make everything match. I kind of use the same color scheme for everything. I like that orange wood. It's very, like... I find it kind of ugly in houses, to be honest. As someone who also builds in The Sims. But it's really nice for zoos and natural things, especially when it's like taiga. It's honestly very similar to the, the color scheme that Frontier used in a lot of the New World theme items. So, anyways, here I, I make the Keeper Hut also match, put it as close as possible, and I use the same stained wood. It's, it's honestly very similar to the shed I made at the front. I do the exact same thing with the roof and everything. I just wanted it all look nice, at least when you're seeing it from the front, even though it's just a little thing. I also don't know why every time I grabbed a new object it was aligning really weird. I'm assuming it was just like because I was on a height map, I, or I was using a height map, I didn't realize how weird the ground was in relation to the um, world axis. But also here I, I forget that there's a real bracket item in the game. I don't know what I was doing. It was a terrible idea <laughs> and I realized that pretty soon. But in the actual final build I uh, remembered that there's an item in the game that I was looking for and I put that there instead. So now the habitat's essentially done so we can move on to the b-roll and just see what the habitat looks like. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you have a really great day.